when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Yesterday. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, I didn't have any role models growing up uh, as to what it was to be a working artist, really. Uh, nobody I knew had uh, made a career of art. I started coming here when I was eight years old. I would take the streetcar, which stopped right outside the museum, went along Rock Hill Road uh, on Saturdays, uh, Saturday mornings. It cost a nickel to, <laughs> to get from home to here. And there was a young woman who ushered us around the different galleries. Uh, and we drew from, I remember mostly drawing from the Egyptian works. We always had time to wander around the museum afterwards, so that was very important. Not at the time, but it left a lasting impression to see. Uh, especially I was impressed with the uh, Chinese, early Chinese painting, Song Dynasty paintings of the 10th, 11th century. They remain with me still as uh, some of the most incredible art that I've ever experienced, east or west. I mean, it just is more significant. Often my work, I think, is, has gone in cycles. I start something and that stops and I do something else and pick it up again later. Is that a form almost that of a labyrinth? Or how does the form of the labyrinth come into your work? When, when do you start first dealing with the labyrinth? In 1961, I built a passageway that curved around. Mm -hmm. to the left, eight feet high, four feet wide to begin with, and then it starts to curve. And I think that that was a kind of a key work for me in terms of the body uh, being in a space, exploring space, having a relationship to a space that was not necessarily one that you perceived the whole of. It was something you explored with your body. I think that was the beginning of the labyrinth. I've often said that public art is an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. It's a contradiction in terms. Why so? How do you see it? There's only private art. The artist comes up with private art. It's private. But I think that's a completely false dichotomy. There is no private public. I mean, it's a conundrum that you only have to read a little of Wittgenstein to realize how this is the wrong way to think about things. What was your first impressions as you discovered the finalized, realized version of the labyrinth here in Kansas City at the Nelson Atkins Museum? I think my first impression was I've never made a work that sort of resounded with the kind of spectacular detail that this work has. Everything about it has this close-up detail finesse and I just don't think that comes through in any work I've ever done before. So that was the first thing I, that impressed me was how every, I think it was Nelson, the philosopher Nelson Goodman said that in art, every difference makes a difference. If a difference makes a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think in this labyrinth, you, you see that. You see the shadows, you see uh, the top bronze cap, you see the gap between the glass, you see the buildup of the reflections. There are these things, there's so much going on, but from a distance, what is it? It's just a glass. You don't see that until you get up to it. So it has this overall confrontation of the thing. You don't seem to process so much until you get close to it, and then all these things start going off. I mean, I'm still thinking about that.